Hello, my name is Osmar de Souza Santos. I'm coming from Brazil, from Instituto, oops, from Instituto Tecnológico de Aeronáutica. We are a military institute. We belong to Brazilian Air Force. So I'll talk about characterization of a nicotinamide shape memory alloy wires treated by nitrogen plasma-based IO implantation, PB2 join. Uh, these are the structure of my lecture today. Well, the motivation. Nikon titanium shaped memory alloys with pre nico surface is desirable as a construction material for a range of applications, from biomaterials to actuators associated to shape memory and superelastic properties. In biomaterials, a uh, potential problem with Nicotitanum implants devices the release of nico in the human body, such as application in the urological and gastroenterological fields, samples for the orthopedic fields, etc. There are other applications that require, applica uh, require resistance to atomic diffusion, chemical stability, and increases surface hardness through the elimination of nico from the surface. Well, actually, there's a hospital in Brazil that they do research, and they ask us to make a special alloy. With actually, they want a wire with nicotinamide shape memory effect, but with the nicotine surface. So we thought, why not uh, nitrogen, nitrogen the surface of the alloy via plasma-based ion implantation technique? So the plasma-based ion implantation technique is an advanced technique that allows three-dimensional eye implantation in complex shapes, workpieces, with, with no dimensional changes of treatment components. Sometimes the surface modification techniques are combined with the producers employed for design of optimal shape memory and super elasticity. The consequence is that not only the surface composition modified, but also the bulk of the micro type. Here we have three methods that we work in our institute to melt these alloys. And we work with vacuum induction melting, we work also with the electron beam melting and arc melting. Of course, every technique has its good and bad points. We choose to make the alloy by vacuum induction melting process. Here's the, the furnace, our furnace. Here's the inside of the furnace, the 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 crucible. the crucible is made of carbon, so we expect a contamination of carbon in the alloy. Here's the raw material inside of the crucible. This is our two alloys that we produce. The first one we, was made by electron beam melting. The, the mass is 22 kilograms. It's a big, big uh, ingot if we compare with the laboratory scale. And the second one is the uh, ingot that we use in this work. It's a vacuum induction melt ingot. The mass is around 20 kilograms. This is our, its chemical composition. Uh, it's a quasi atomic uh, alloy with a um, medium concentration of carbon. This carbon uh, is from the crystal, basically. Well, in order to have the wire, we hot forming the the ingot, we use the hydraulic forming after we hot rolling into bars, and then we hot suasion, and at the last we wire draw down to two millimeters in diameter of the, the ingot. We have this wire with two millimeters. Um, we have a wire, now we have to make the treatment, the plasma based treatment. We, here is the setup that we used. This is the chamber where we are going to implant the plasma. The sample stays here. Here are the treatment conditions of PB2 wire. We use a high voltage pulses, 16 kilovolts, frequency of 200 hertz, pulses of 35 microseconds, temperature of treatment 741 degrees Celsius for two hours. Um, as a result, so we wanted a free surface an echo free surface. Here we have an uh, element, uh, element profile of the, the, the wire. 
in the beginning, of, in the surface of the wire, we don't have an echo, as we can see in this profile. And when we reach 100 nanometers in deep, the chemical composition of the nickel starts to increase. And what we have in the surface? We have titanium, carbon, and oxygen, and of course, nitrogen. And what about the, the phase transformation of the, now we have two wires, one treated and another reference to we see the difference of what happened with the, when we treat the wire. Uh, what, what about the temperature of phase transformation? Here's the solid wine is the reference line, and the dashed line is the treated wire. As we can see in the graph, there is no significant change in the temperatures, uh, as we can see in this table below. Um, this is a macro graph of our wire, treated wire. There's a certain roughness in the surface. That's because we etched the wire before the treatment because there were um, an intention of improve the cell addition in the surface of the wire to application. So we made this roughness, but I will show you that it's not so good idea to make it. This is another micro graph of the wire, treated wire. We have this titanium carbide and exposed in the surface. This is, it is exposed because we did an action before treatment and we confirmed the, its chemical composition by a line scan made in the EDS, as you can confirm here, and we see the nitrogen now over the surface. It is implanted. This is the stress strength curves that we perform into both wires reference and treated wires. We first in the first cycle, we deform it up to 2% and then we heat it to 120 degrees Celsius to recover its shape. And the second cycle, we deform it up to 4% and recover it again. And the third cycle, we deform it to 6% and recover. There's a residual strain here. And for reference and the, the treated wire, if we look at the, the curve for calculated for four persons of strain, we can see that there is a um, difference in the elastic modulus of the treated wire and the reference wire. But it's not, not changed so much the way that it behaves mechanically. So we did an internal friction curves in the material, as you can see, we haven't difference in the behavior too. This is a tangent delta. It is the same in heating. Everything was going okay. We had treated wire. And when we look at again to the, the, the micrograph of the stress strain in wire, we saw a lot of cracks perpendicular to the strain deformation, to the strain to the to the loading direction. So what is happening here is that we have a book with a micro titanium with shape memory effect, and we have a surface with chemica, chemically changing composition. So in the surface, we don't have a shape memory effect. And when we stress the material and we deform, it cracks. Of course, the, these applications, we are not intent to make a large deformation in materials. Uh, but it's not a good idea to have this crack. So our next step is to use an alloy made of electron beam melted to avoid those impurities in the surface. And we are we plan to understand better when this, those cracks start to happen and to to calculate the application. How can we deform it? And here are some conclusions. Stress strain tests for the reference wire in the PB3 PB2I treatment wire indicated that the treatment did not change significantly with the mechanical properties of nickel titanium wire. The Martin C transformation temperatures for the reference wire and the, the treated wire are very close one another with the highest difference for MTT occurring for the AS values, which is the start of austenite temperature which was about 3%, but there are cracks perpendicular to the load direction of the implanted surface 
due to stress strain cycles, this practice could not lead to a could lead to a fracture if the sample were submitted to a higher higher stress or a cycling load, which is not desirable in applications as a biomaterials. Thank you.